Originally, I was afraid to leave Milwaukee. When I realized that I wanted to sing via my mentor, um, kind of backing me into a corner and forcing me to look my truths in the face, um, I was like, oh, I'm going to LA then, tomorrow. But LA is expensive, um, but more importantly, connections matter because music is collaboration. So um, I moved to River West because they're, everyone's everywhere. All of um, the artists that I work pretty intimately with are literally within walking distance of me right now in my flat. And um, that's great. And then the general communal energy of people who are so committed to what they're creating that they're taking like financial chances and life chances um, in order just to be able to express themselves. Um, is a good energy to have around you when you're doing the same thing. The book that I'm reading right now, I'm reading Lolita. <laughs> and, um, I, cause whatever book that I'm currently reading informs how I, like the lens that I'm putting on the world as I'm going forward, which is interesting. And it also kind of informs how I think through processes. So I feel like I, I'm thinking like Valdemir right now because that's who I'm reading and he does so like it's a beautiful book it's really um not wordy so much in the sentences are wordy but his word choice is very um dramatic um borderline ostentatious but still that's how I feel like I'm channeling a Russian man <laughs> <laughs> Three books ago, I read Birthing a Slave um, by Marianne Schwartz, I believe. And it was about being enslaved in the antebellum South and giving birth to children who, um, in theory, were not owned by you because you were a slave, so your child was also property. And in that book, I found out that the father of modern day gynecology's name was Marion Sims. And he got as successful as he did because he purchased women who looked like me um, to experiment on without anesthesia um, to um, perfect certain procedures that some of us, they still use today. And so as I was reading that, I was realizing that the healthcare system was actually in theory not created for me, but was created because of me. So that made me think even further about all of the other possible systems that could have been created because my people were used as collateral, but it wasn't created to uplift my people. And so all I can say is as a black person, you have to advocate for yourself fiercely all the time. And as exhausting as it is to constantly have to justify why it's okay for you to be who you are, you have to because um, the mainstream society doesn't understand. And I think that if we continually to remind them to the point of exhaustion, maybe one day before the sun goes out, they will understand. I hope that People learn how to love their children, and I hope that they learn how to love their spouses, and I hope they learn how to be in healthy relationships, and I hope that little black girls love their hair and their skin, and little black boys don't feel like they're a nuisance in class when they um, are just being themselves and that happens to be boisterous and energetic but still happy. I hope that's not continually oppressed um, and I hope that we continue to organize as a people and I hope that we know, can, like sincerely know in our hearts when we get up in the morning that we're enough, that we don't have to do anything else to keep the people around us who don't understand us comfortable. We can show up exactly as we are. We can be loud, we can be obnoxious, we can be whatever we are and it's fine. And we're still beautiful. If there was a little girl who wanted to create anything 
poems or music or a picture. I would just want her to call me so that we could talk, so I could tell her that it was okay and that um, I could help her. And if I can't help her, I'll find somebody that can help her.